All right, let's get right into it. Today, we're going to break down a trial that really shook up a core belief in orthopedic trauma, the hip attack trial. This was a landmark study published in The Lancet, and it basically forced us all to take a hard look at what we thought we knew about timing for hip fracture surgery. So let's dig into the data and figure out what it really means for our day-to-day -day practice. Okay, so here's our game plan. First, we'll cover the big hypothesis everyone was working under before this trial. Then we'll dive into the methodology of hip attack itself, followed by the really juicy stuff, the primary and secondary outcomes. And finally, we'll tie it all together and talk about what this means for us in the OR. So first up, let's set the stage. To really get why this trial was so important, you have to understand the clinical mindset at the time. There was a long-held belief about surgical timing, and hip attack was designed to put that belief to the ultimate test. And the scale of this problem is just staggering. Think about this number, one and a half million. That's the number of hip fractures happening across the globe every single year. For anyone in orthopedics, this isn't just a statistic, it's our daily reality. This is the patient in Trauma Bay 3 right now. For decades, the dogma was simple, faster is better. And it made a certain kind of sense, right? All the observational data we had pointed in the same direction. Get the patient to the OR quickly and you lower their risk of dying. The thinking was that early fixation would shut down that whole systemic inflammatory cascade that an unfixed fracture unleashes on these frail patients. But here's the nagging question. Was it really true? Or was this just a classic case of confounding by indication? You know, were the healthier, more stable patients just the ones who are fit enough to get to the OR faster, making it look like early surgery was the key? Hip attack was designed to cut right through that noise and ask one clean question. In a big, proper RCT, does getting to surgery in under six hours actually move the needle on mortality and major complications? Okay, so to answer that huge question, the investigators put together a really powerful trial. Let's break down how they did it, because the methodology here is why the conclusions carry so much weight for our practice. And this thing was a beast. We're talking almost 3,000 patients. 69 hospitals across 17 countries. This was not a small, single-center study. It was built for real-world generalizability. And they did it right, with an intention to treat analysis and masked outcome adjudicators. All the stuff you want to see in a high-quality, practice-changing trial. The design itself was actually pretty elegant. You had two clear arms. The accelerated group was the go-now pathway. Immediate medical clearance bumped to the top of the OR list with a goal of getting them fixed within six hours. And then you had the standard care arm, which just followed the hospital's usual workflow and wait times. And here's the proof that the protocol worked. They created a real, significant separation between the groups. The accelerated patients got to the OR in a median of just six hours. Standard care, 24 hours. That 18-hour difference is the crucial variable they were testing. All right, so now we get to the main event. The trial was powered to look at two huge co-primary outcomes at 90 days, all-cause mortality and a composite of major complications like MI, PE, and stroke. This is what it was all about. And the top-line results were, well, they were a bombshell. Look at the numbers. Mortality, 9% in the accelerated group, 10% in standard care, no difference. The p-value says it all. What about major complications? Virtually identical at 22%. The belief we had held for so long just did not hold up when put to the test. So the main finding was just crystal clear. For the overall hip fracture population, racing to the operating room did not significantly reduce the risk of death or major complications at 90 days. This finding flew directly in the face of what years of observational data had led us to believe. But wait, the story is not over, not by a long shot. Because once you get past the primary outcomes and dig into the secondary analyses, you start to see a much more nuanced and, frankly, a more clinically interesting picture. So while it didn't save lives, the accelerated pathway did make a difference in recovery. Patients had significantly less delirium. They had fewer UTIs, they got out of bed almost a full day sooner, and they went home a day earlier. Now, these are not trivial things. This is a big deal for patient morbidity and for the healthcare system. Let's just focus on delirium for a second. We've all managed a post-op delirious hip fracture patient. It's a clinical nightmare. A 3% absolute risk reduction here is a really big deal. This finding alone, which is probably driven by getting their pain under control and getting them mobilized sooner, is a huge win for the accelerated surgery pathway. But here, here is where it gets incredibly interesting. This was a post-talk analysis, so you have to take it with a grain of salt. 
but wow. In the subgroup of patients who came in with an elevated troponin, so they already had some myocardial injury, accelerated surgery dramatically reduced mortality. The hazard ratio is 0.43. This is a massive signal that for this specific high-risk group, the ongoing systemic stress of that unfixed fracture is deadly, and getting to the OR fast could be life-saving. So what do we do with all this? How does this evidence change what we do on our next call shift? How should we be thinking about our OR scheduling and talking to our patients and their families? Well, what it means is that hip attack basically corrected the record. It gave us level one evidence that showed us the flaws in the old observational data. We now know with a high degree of certainty that for the average hip fracture patient, early surgery is not the mortality reducing silver bullet we thought it was. And that is a huge practice changing piece of information. So this trial gives us the data from much more informed discussion with our whole team, anesthesia, internal medicine, hospital administration. We can now say with confidence that an accelerated pathway is safe. The conversation shifts from, we have to do this to save lives, to, okay, this doesn't reduce mortality, but it does reduce delirium and length of stay. Are those important benefits worth the logistical costs? And of course, it screams that we need more research on that high-risk troponin group. And here's the bottom line. This is the key takeaway. We need to reframe our goal for accelerated surgery. For the general hip fracture population, it's not a mortality reduction strategy. It is a patient benefit strategy. We're doing it to improve the quality of their recovery, to reduce nasty complications like delirium, and to help them hit those recovery milestones faster. And so that leaves us with the final question, the one that every hospital and orthopedic department now has to answer for itself. With this high-level evidence from hip attack in hand, how do you balance the very real logistical challenges of a fast-track pathway against the now-proven benefits for your patient's recovery? That's the conversation we all need to be having.